What's up guys? So I thought we'd do a little bit of an update on the Commodore PC-10, so stay tuned. All right, so last time we left off, we were installing uh, a second floppy drive for dual floppies on this, which would have been an upgrade at the time. But anyway, one of the first kind of updates on this is I found an actual Commodore keyboard. This is a Commodore branded. It's not the, the correct one for this model. I don't know which one it's for because the correct one actually has this right here where it's at an angle. So it goes straight this way and then down at an at a angle. And that w would be to allow you to have your keyboard directly in front of it instead of it just poking out here. Uh, this one here would have been to one of the ones like possibly a Commodore Colt where the keyboard plugged in on the side and you didn't have to worry about it sticking out of the front there. But anyway, I do have an original Commodore keyboard so that's awesome now and it works really well. When I got it, it did have a little bit of tape on it because it had the original cover on it when I got it. So it hadn't been used much and if it did, it was taken care of and there's really nothing down in these keys at all. It's very clean. Uh, so I was happy to get that. I traded for that on a Facebook group and was able to get that in trade. Um, but anyway, last time we left off, I was installing dual floppies on this and we left the video with uh, not able to get the B drive to work. The A drive I could get to work, which always worked, you know. So anyway, this uh, setup in here has the original type of floppy cables, no twist. So you've got just two connectors for floppies, no twist in it. So you have to set jumpers, and I did have the correct jumper settings, which would have been the A drive, which is the top one, set to term, which terminates, because it's the last drive on the ribbon cable, and then you set it to the number 2 on here. So you've got the 1 and 2 jumpers set on this right here, which on the drive select, you would have drive select 0 set for A, but it's actually number 2 on this little bottom line here. So that's the A drive. B drive, you would have just the number three on the bottom here, which on the drive select would be number one, and that's how the drives are set. So that was set correctly. What I didn't know, and I had the manuals for this, I just didn't have the exact dip switches. It didn't show these dip switches over here. Let's see if I can zoom in on these. Okay, so anyway, I did not have these set for dual floppies. Now they are set for dual floppies and an 8087 math coprocessor, which I have installed as well. Now under here, this slot right next, see that's the processor right there. This is the math code processor. This slot was empty right here and I actually got one off of eBay that came from like Japan, I think, or China because they're quite cheap over there and in the U.S. they want a lot more for these. But this was a used one, so that kind of helped too. But it's actually an Intel 8087 math code processor and that's installed and you have to set the dip switches for that as well over here. So now this is set for everything properly and this sets things like whether it's it's going to boot to the system BIOS or diagnostics. It sets the number of floppies. Uh, it sets your graphics card mode and it also sets whether you have a math coprocessor, in, co-processor installed or not. So now that is all set properly and now we have everything working. Everything reads and we're going to boot it up and I'll show you here in just a minute. So let me throw everything back together finally because it is a pain taking this apart. Like I said, there's two screws in each side and then five on the rear and it's kind of a pain. But I like having all the screws in it because I like it original. It's just nicer that way. So anyway, stay tuned and we'll get it set up. Oh, and also those jumpers set how much RAM you have. So it was already set for 640K, which is what this card is. That's a 640K RAM card. So that was already set. So now we're going to put everything back together and I'll boot it up and I'll show you what it looks like and what it does now. All right, so here we are back at the DOS prompt. Thought I would go ahead and show you now that uh, both discs do read independently with that set. So now we've got a disc in drive A and we can go up here and hit A drive. And you can see the light going on there. And now we've got the A prompt. Now we can hit DIR and it'll list the directory of the A drive. So there's everything. This is just a DOS 3.3 disk, which uh, does belong with this computer because that's what's on it. All right, so now it's done with that. Now we'll go ahead and put this into drive B, close that. And now up here we'll go and hit B drive, hit enter. Now you can see the B drive is lighting up. And now we're at the prompt for B and we can hit directory and list the same directory again. That was that one, but now it's coming from the B drive. So yeah, that absolutely works perfect now. So that is awesome. Uh, as far as the 8087 math coprocessor that I put in, 
Um, I, I, I don't know exactly what that helps with. From what I'm told, it helps with programs that um, do like numbers and things, which the only one I have on here is Lotus 1, 2, 3. And I could load it up and it, I mean, show you, but basically it just loads, like th this, this computer is original, like it has original people's files on it from the college that it came from. And I can load up their work files and see things like uh, payroll and stuff like that. It, it loads it like instantly and everything, so I don't, you know, there's no reason for me to show you that, but it does load it instantly. What I do want to show you is that I have actually installed another game on here. Uh, I don't know if I ever showed you Ultima 6. It's kind of, you know, um, I only have the... I only have the play discs here for it, so I've got all the discs, and it's like seven discs, I think it was, seven or eight, something like that. Um, but I do have that installed on here, but I've actually installed another game, so let me show you this game that I have. Alright, so this is one that I have here. This is the original Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Infocom, and you can see it's made for the IBM PC, PC Junior, and runs on DOS 2.0 and higher. And I actually have DOS 3.3 uh, 3 on here. So this, if I can get it, I probably won't really get it to sit here very well. But anyway, this is uh, when games were really awesome. I mean, the big box games that they came out with later were great, but this is like the original games that came with, with things that were really cool. So you can see this front cover opens up, and you've got like a little bit of a magazine here with a lot of reading to do kind of about the game. Some funny stuff like, uh, you know, this this thing that you know <laughs> they're taught they talk about there and just weird stuff but this is actually stuff that came with this game like there you can see fluff and it just says goes anywhere under your bed behind the commode um, on the bottom of your in the at the bottom of your pocket inside your navel uh, destruct orders there you've got a don't panic pin button you've got some Jew Jana 200 super chromatic peril sensitive sunglasses uh, no tea, just like the tea professional hitchhikers don't carry. That's kind of a funny thing because it doesn't include tea, and that's why it says no tea. Uh, microscopic space fleet, and it's got like a little baggie with a label there on it. How much would you pay now? 100 Altarian, 200, 300. Um, and then it kind of goes on, and here's like the entire instruction manual for the game. And it goes on a while. Nothing else super interesting, and you can see the back page has got a little bit of info there. Um, and now here we've got the actual original stuff that this came with. Here's the glasses. Like these, these are just like black cardboard. You can't see through them or anything. Um, so it came with that. And here is the original space, or the original fluff that it came with. And here is the don't panic badge. And then here is the microscopic space fleet. Now there's nothing in here, that, and that's, you know, part of the joke. There's just nothing in it, because it's microscopic, I guess. Um, it, can't, it comes with the destruction order here. The order for destruction. It just says, shows a house, and it says it's in the way. Uh, highway right of way is coming through or something. And then here is something else that it includes. Not sure what it is. It's not in any language I know. Probably not a real language. Uh, this is something I put in here. This is a play disc that I made. So this is actually if you don't have a hard drive on your computer, like some you know back in the day computers didn't have hard drives. You ran everything off the discs, and this is a boot disc for this game. So I could just boot to that and play the game. But I do have a hard drive, so I've actually installed it to the hard drive. And here's the original five and a quarter floppy, and then here is the original card that it came with. And then here is the also like the installation uh, little book pamphlet here. And I actually have the clear cover because there's actually all this goes in here and then like a clear cover goes over this and I have that too. It's just kind of uh, all out of here at the moment because I was actually installing it. So anyway, I'll throw all that back in there later. But it's just a really cool game and this is like, uh, this came out in, let's see... 1984 this game came out you can see how good of shape it's in the box is just spectacular and uh, looks great and this game's actually worth a bit you know it's it's not cheap and it's and it's not easy to find especially complete like this this is absolutely 100 percent complete everything that came with this game is in here and it's in uh absolutely great shape so this is an interactive fiction science fiction game 
and throw that down here and now we're going to uh, load it up if I just backspace off the keys I hit so we'll go to the folder it's in and let me list the directory here so we need to go to one of these let me see what uh, what this says here so for the hard disk system we need to type CD infocom which we did and then type the title of the story which uh, I think there's only one file in here it just says hitchhike and that's a uh, com file and a dat file so we'll see if this actually loads the game I don't know if it will or not and I actually installed a demo on here, a Cornerstone demo. I don't know that game. I don't know if I hit enter. Nope. So there we go. There is the program loaded right there. And uh, that's the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, let me grab this off the floor. If you've never played a game like this, these are the original, like, adventure games so it kind of says here infocom interactive fiction a science fiction story copyright 1984 infocom release 58 serial number blah 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 and then here's the game start you wake up the room is spinning very gently round your head or at least it would be if you could see it which you can't it is pitch black and now you can uh it kind of gives you like a location here i i, I suspect as well as or the room you're in which is bedroom so this is kind of like your coordinates and then it counts your moves and everything so um i don't know okay so i type get up very difficult but you manage it the room is still spinning it dips and sways a little let's type like turn on light. I've never played this game. Good start to the day. Pity it's going to be the worst one of your life. The light is now on. Now it says the bedroom. The bedroom is a mess. It is a small bedroom with a faded carpet and an old wallpaper. There is a wash basin, a chair, a tatty dressing gown slung over it and a window with curtains drawn near the exit leading south is a phone. There is a flathead screwdriver here. There is a toothbrush here. So of course you can uh, pick up items like the toothbrush and the screwdriver and uh, it kind of tells you what's in the room and that kind of thing. I think you can type things like look around and maybe, I don't know if it'll give you more info or say the same thing. Okay, so basically it says the same thing when uh, I type look around. Um, so let's type like take screw driver. It dances by you like a thing possessed. So I can't quite pick that up. Uh, let's take Take the toothbrush see what that does it dances by you like a thing possessed so apparently i cannot take neither of those items near the exit south near the exit leading south is a phone let's just type like exit room south you use the word south in a way that i don't understand so there when you type things sometimes it doesn't understand it Yeah, so I'm gonna have to look up, you know, read the guide and everything on the commands because I don't. I, I've played some of these games, but I don't know every game's commands and what it recognizes, you know. So you gotta say things like take, move, give, talk, you know, and then some maybe something after it, referring to the person or the thing or something like that of what you want to do. But anyway, that is the system now. So I've got two games installed on this bad boy pc 10 and i've also got an 8087 math coprocessor processor it's maxed out on the ram 640k ram like i said and now it's got dual floppies so uh this system would be pretty ballin for like 1985 or like 1987 i don't know somewhere in there it'd be pretty uh ballin of a system you know of course there's no mouse this is before a mouse was like a uh an essential thing like computers nowadays you, you just back then you just nobody used mice mice you could use them and get them at, at later times but uh and install them on here but you need an adapter card and all that there's actually no plug on here for a mouse there's not the uh, serial which was like the older connection for a mouse and there's not the ps2 which was you know uh, like an ibm standard thing later on and then now we have usb mice and bluetooth and all that good stuff so yeah 
this is uh, pretty cool. So I'm going to continue playing this game and uh, have fun with it. So that's uh, pretty cool, you know. And uh, I just, I, uh, I really love this computer, you know. It's my oldest computer. And uh, it's definitely fun. So now I've got the PC-10 with the 8087. I've got this one I picked up for free. This is a Mac 2006 model. I found that on the side of the road. It needed two RAM sticks, so I put those in. That cost me $15. Found the keyboard for it uh, at the Salvation Army in the same town I found it in, and for two dollars. So I got the two the keyboard for two bucks, the matching one. Then I already got a mice. You know, it just uses USB mice. But it, I booted up. It works and everything, and uh, it looks great. It's got a great panel on it. It is from 2006, so basically I can install games on it. Like I got some old Mac games I've installed on it. And it browses the internet surprisingly super fast. And it also watches high def YouTube videos super fast. So it's a great little system to let the kids sit here and browse on. And then for me to play uh, Macintosh games on. Because that's the only Mac I've ever owned. And then of course I got the uh, Windows 98 system that I built in my previous video. So that's awesome. And then over here the Windows XP system that's connected to this tower here and I run it on that 19 inch monitor and then uh, this of course is the Windows 95 system with the Voodoo 2 in it and of course that has the Voodoo 3 and then down here is my other older system that I don't really have hooked up because I just don't have a use for them right now that is an older Windows 98 system no uh, special graphics card installed or anything it just basically Windows 98 you can run DOS on it DOS, DOS games I may turn it into a straight DOS system I don't know it is a 500 megahertz so that is kind of fast for a lot of old DOS games um, and then the one next to it that's my P4 Windows 98 build and that's a pretty cool excuse me that's a pretty cool system there too and then this one is something else I'm working on you can't really see it but uh, the case is kind of slid forward so the drives are kind of far back on it but that's an HT PC, which is like a home theater PC. And I picked that up for $30. And uh, it's a cool little thing. And I'm actually going to use it probably in my living room to uh, run my network movies on. Because I have like a thousand movies on a hard drive that I use in here. But I'd like to be able to watch them in there. Uh, I, do, I mean, I do have this TV, but uh, I'd rather watch them in the living room with the family and that kind of thing. So I'll probably have that in there than like network the hard drive to it or something and just stream movies to that. Because it is a great little HTPC. It's got like a capture card built in and everything. And uh, it's full high def audio with uh, all kinds of cool stuff on it. Alright. So. So anyway guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's really fun messing with these old computers. And I know I'm I'm doing a lot of computer videos lately. But it's because it's the winter time still. We got, we got snow on the ground right now. Uh, let me show you. I won't... Uh, run outside but i'll turn this on real quick and you can see the security cameras let me go to uh can't really uh see a whole lot there but it, every, all the white you know the sidewalk i got salt on but see everything else is white everything's covered in snow right now and yeah it's just cold out it's not fun working in the garage so anyway a lot of computer videos lately but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, have a good one. Thanks for watching.